Hello, my name is Carlo Oyer. I'm a board certified emergency physician and I produce medical educations like this one. You can visit my website at carloohler.com. In this video, we're going to talk about acne vulgaris or acne. It's commonly in adolescents, but it can happen in adults and it can happen even later in life. It's called acne de novo, people who never had it before. Why does it happen? Well, the skin has sebaceous glands. These are little pores in the skin and has glands underneath to secrete oils, oils to hydrate your skin, keep it moist, keep it soft, keep it protected from insects and bacteria and things like that. It secretes, it secretes sebum, which is an oil, and some the oil carries dead particles of skin or keratin up to the surface. When this keratin becomes water or blood, and it's exposed to light, it produces blackhead. When it, it becomes blocked but doesn't get exposed, so there's no hole in it, they become white heads. And this is what's commonly known as acne vulgaris. So we'd love to think that it's something you ate that caused it. We like to blame adolescents for eating too much candy or chocolates, but that's actually not been proven to be the case. Maybe there's some association with dairy, but the literature is not really there. So it's really more of a genes issue and not a cleanliness issue. Although being clean, especially with special solutions and soaps and antibiotic ointments does improve acne vulgaris. There are some medications that can lead to acne flaring up or coming on. That includes seizure medications like dilantin, antidepressants like lithium, B vitamins, and steroids, especially birth control pills, since steroids include glucocorticoids like steroids, uh, prednisone, methylprednisolone, and things like that. So all those things can aggravate um, acne. Over-the-counter treatment. There are things you can do at home. You don't need a doctor to start treating acne vulgaris. First thing is get some benzoyl peroxide, just peroxide water, basically, and clean your skin daily with that. You can use salicylic acid, which is essentially an acid. It helps breaks up the clot pores because it's an acid. It dilutes those clot plugs and lets the, the secretions, the sebum come out. Up hydroxic acid works the same way. And sulfur. Sulfur actually helps remove the dead keratin skin cells out of the skin. Acne can be divided into mild, moderate, and severe. And that's very important for the practitioner because that'll determine how aggressive the treatment. Obviously, mild, you're going to do over-the-counter things. Moderate you're going to start using prescription medication. But even within moderate, there might be a first-line treatment. Once that fails, you move into more aggressive treatment. And then severe acne, which has big pustules and pus and scar tissue, that's the more severe treatment. And usually at that point, most doctors will refer you to a dermatologist, a skin specialist. But other doctors can indeed prescribe medications used to treat acne. Medical treatment. Well, it goes from topical medication, things you can apply in the skin, Oral medication, things you can take by mouth. Hormonal treatment, which are also things you can take by mouth, but have to deal with the hormone mechanisms. And then, of course, procedures to actually drain those comedones and those abscesses and boils and everything that forms with it. The topical medications include the retinoids, which is essentially vitamin A, different forms of it. Trenitoin is the most common one. And, of course, antibacterials. And there's many different kinds of antibacterials. You can even mix the two or do combos of like benzoyl peroxide, which is for mild, um, and you can combine them with a uh, topical antibiotic like benzoyl peroxide clindamycin, benzoyl peroxide erythromycin or something like that. When that's kind of fail and you want to be a little bit more aggressive, you're in the moderate to severe category, but not quite ready to pull the trigger on a severe acne, you can use oral medication that include a number of antibiotics, clindamycin, erythromycin, and all the different cyclings, doxycycline, monocycline, tetracycline, you can use those to control the acne. Hormonal, there's spirolactone, which is in males, to kind of prevent the effects of the testosterone on the body and the estrogen for females to, again, counteract the effects of testosterone and ultimately procedures. So topical, uh, oral medication, hormonal treatments, and then procedures are different treatments we can do. The most effective, the big kahuna out of acne treatment is Accutane, isotrenitoin. But the issue is that not all doctors prescribe it. Actually, to prescribe the medication, the doctor has to take a special online course called iPledge, 
and basically pledge that he's going to follow the directives of how to prescribe Accutane. Number two, the patient has to go to I pledge and sign a petition and a form, even if they're males, and you'll, you'll hear why that's the case. And uh, the pharmacy that spends the medication also has to be an I pledge pharmacy, so not all pharmacies do that. So for those reasons, most doctors choose not to prescribe it. If the acne is bad enough to need Accutane, they'll refer you to a dermatologist who that's their bread and butter. That's what they do. So another name for acting is isotretinoin. So um, we talked about tretinoin before, but now it's isotretinoin. And it's essentially vitamin A. It's a retinoid, okay? But before we tell you how to use it, when to use it, and, and those kinds of things, let's talk about why you shouldn't jump right into it. It has a number of side effects. For one, uh, in one in every five people will get an initial Accutane purge. They actually will get worse the first week or two. So be aware of that and don't get discouraged. It will get better. But one in 500 can get acne fulminance, which is a severe form of acne, really bad. And obviously that's not something we want. So it needs to be monitored closely. So if you start seeing an acute worsening persistent, then we withdraw the medication and treat the fulminant acne. Accutane is extremely teratogenic. That means it can cause serious birth defects. So if you're a female you, or even a male, you have to go to I pledge and sign a form. Of course, if you're a male, it doesn't really apply, but you still have to go through the process of signing the pledge form. If you're a female, you have to be on two different forms of birth control. You have to do a blood-based pregnancy test before starting. That means it can't be just a home test. Oh, I was negative. It has to be proven that it was tested and it's negative. You have to do monthly pregnancy tests and so on. And this is why there's a lot of hesitance or resistance to just prescribe it to anyone. But in addition to the teratogenesis, it can cause depression, it can cause aggression, uh, it can cause something called pseudotumor cerebri, which is swelling of the brain. It causes pressure inside the brain, severe headaches, and so on. So be attentive to those signs of signal, especially if you also take tetracycline, because tetracycline can also cause pseudotumor cerebri. So if you're taking tetracycline and Accutane, then potentially that can be augmented effect on that. It can cause, of course, of course, dry skin, chapped lips, which is easy to treat, nosebleeds, it can thin out your hair. So those are important things that you should know before you decide, hey, am I going to go with this? Especially when there's other therapies that might have worked that you didn't necessarily give it a good chance for it to work. Now let's talk about the next thing, blood work. So anybody on Accutane will need free blood work, CBC complete blood count, because it can affect the, the blood counts. Number two, it needs a CMP, complete metabolic panel, to check your liver because it can affect your liver and cause a transaminitis or an inflammation of your liver. And check your triglycerides because it can elevate the, the fat molecules inside your blood. So for that reason, you need every month blood tests. It, it's a bigger deal than other medications, right? So you have to check the blood work monthly. And if you're taking Accutane, you cannot take vitamin A also because like I said before, Accutane is a vitamin A derivative. And that's it. That's what you need to know about acne vulgaris, the different mild, moderate, severe, over-the-counter treatments, uh, topical treatments, oral treatments, more aggressive treatments, and the big kahuna, what people want, the most definitive treatment, Accutane. Just be aware, there are some bad side effects. They, it's still a great medication. It, it works amazingly well. But it can cost one in five get the Accutane purge, one in 500 get acne fulminance, and you need blood work both before starting and every month, and you need to sign the I pledge online. You have to find a pharmacy that does I pledge so they can release the Accutane to you. Once the decision is made to start the Accutane, it's going to be started at 0 0.5 milligrams per kilogram once a day. And then after a month, it goes up to one milligram per kilogram per day. So for an average adult, 70 kilograms, you do 30 something milligrams, it comes, it comes 10, 20, 30, uh, 60. So probably like 30 milligram tablets once a day. And then after a month, twice a day. And then we use it for a few months. And, and most people will see a significant improvement on their acne. And this is why most people want the medication. Another thing you should absolutely consider is the price of the medication. As you can see here, um, the price going through GoodRx, if you were to do retail price, it can be as much as $500. Now, if you do the coupon, particularly in this particular pharmacy, Rite Aid, it can go down to $105 if you use GoodRx. Just go to GoodRx.com, put your medication information, 
and then you'll be able to get your coupon for a discount agent. So I hope you learned a lot about acne today in this video. Please share your comments, suggestions, share this video with somebody who can benefit from the information, and we'll see you on our next education video. Bye-bye.